In this video, we will embark on an exclusive tour of the Born Cruiser 46 Traveller, a 13.97 meter steel coastal explorer yacht, boasting a beam of 4.55 meters and a draft of 1.25 meters. This luxurious and highly capable vessel was meticulously crafted in the Netherlands in 2020 by Jack Worth de Bornstring BV. And at the time of filming, this exquisite motor yacht is available for purchase through De Volk Yacht Brokers. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video where I'll reveal and walk you through some of my absolute favourite parts and standout features on board this remarkable boat. I boarded the boats using the large, well-designed swim platform. This spacious bathing platform is made of imitation teak and provides an elegant and functional area for water activities and easy boarding. It also features a deck shower and two stainless steel transom doors for added convenience and, of course, safety. I like the fact that this boat features both port and starboard boarding gates which significantly enhances the boarding experience for guests. This thoughtful design ensures smooth and efficient embarking and disembarking, eliminating the need to wait for others and making it much easier to enter and leave the vessel. The spacious cockpit provides an oval shaped table made of imitation teak, providing a sophisticated and durable surface perfect for outdoor dining and of course entertaining. On the port side of the cockpit you'll find the stairs that lead up to the flybridge which is of course a fantastic vantage point for navigating and enjoying the panoramic views. The cockpit's floor features a deck hatch that can easily be raised by one person revealing impressive all-round access to the boat's engine bay. Inside you'll find a powerful Volvo Penta D4 diesel engine boasting 175 horsepower and 128.8 kW, delivering a top speed of 10 knots and a comfortable cruising speed of 8 knots. But more about that later on in the video. The boat features wide side decks on both the port and starboard side with boarding gates. Thanks to the high bulwarks and sturdy handrails, you'll feel incredibly secure while walking around the upper deck. Even during adverse weather conditions, navigating the deck remains easy and safe ensuring a pleasant experience while motoring along. As we step onto the foredeck, take note of the inviting sun pads and the well-placed hatch. This design not only allows an abundance of natural light to enter the accommodation areas, but also greatly improves ventilation. The boat is equipped with a 30 kilogram Bruce anchor, providing reliable and secure anchoring in various seabed conditions. It is coupled with a 30 meter long anchor chain to ensure the appropriate scope is maintained when anchoring. The anchoring system itself features an electrical windlass with remote control. The deck of the Bourne Cruiser 46 Traveller is made of steel and finished with imitation teak, providing a stylish and durable surface. Additionally, the vessel has a deck wash system, 10 foldable portholes, a deck hatch and double glazed sliding windows in the saloon. Before we check out the interior spaces on this boat, let's head upstairs onto the flybridge. If the weather turns a bit gnarly, then there's a great deck hatch that can be closed to seal off the flybridge from the inclement weather. The radar mast on this vessel is designed to be lowered hydraulically, making it easy to adjust the boat's air draft when necessary. This feature is particularly useful when navigating under low bridges or in areas with height restrictions. The air draft can be reduced to 3.48 meters by making minor adjustments. The mast also houses a Raymarine Quantum 
FQ24C radar system, CCTV camera, and various aerials for the boat's VHF, AIS, and GPS systems. If you need to update or upgrade any of your nav or comms gear, be sure to check out my Amazon store. You'll find a link in the video description. I'm particularly fond of the versatile seating arrangements up here on the flybridge. With a helm position on the starboard side, two forward facing seats amidships, and another seat over on the port side. There's plenty of room for both the captain and guests to enjoy the views and engage in conversation while cruising. But what do you think of this flybridge? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, if you've got any questions, then I'll always reply to any comments, questions, or queries which are sent with a super thanks. It's a great way to support my channel. The helm station features a hydraulic steering system providing smooth and responsive control of the vessel. It also has a repeater display for the Raymarine nav equipment and a set of repeater controls for the boat's bow and stern thrusters. And now we've finished having a look around the flybridge, let's head down into the saloon and check out the accommodation areas. As we enter the saloon, note the seating area on the starboard side that is located opposite a well-equipped galley that's over on the port side of the vessel. This seating area is incredibly comfortable and comes with lots of storage thanks to the drawers underneath the seats. The galley is outfitted with a stylish Corian countertop and is equipped with a four burner Siemens induction cooktop as well as a Siemens Combi oven microwave. Thanks to the 135 liter isotherm refrigerator and separate isotherm freezer, there's plenty of space for cold storage. They've also found space for an integrated dishwasher. Moving forward, we enter a raised section of the saloon. I also like the placement of the grab rail on the port side. Opposite the U-shaped seating area is a large retractable television. This is a great place to sit back and relax and catch up on your favorite YouTube channel whilst you are in a picturesque anchor spot or whilst you're underway. As we approach the helm station, you'll notice the well-organized layout and state-of-the-art navigation and communication equipment. The primary control center is equipped with a Raymarine Axiom XL 16-inch screen chart plotter, displaying crucial nav data and offering touchscreen functionality. Adjacent to the chart plotter, you'll find the Raymarine i70 depth sounder and log, which are integrated with the chart plotter display. For maintaining communication, the helm station boasts a Raymarine Ray 90 VHF radio. Autopilot capabilities are provided by the Raymarine P70 Evolution EV200 system, complete with an S100 remote control. And feast your eyes on these extremely comfortable bucket, helm and navigation seats. They really are as comfortable as they look. Let's head down into the accommodation area. There's a total of three cabins with seven berths on board this vessel. The starboard guest cabin features a single bed, providing comfortable accommodation for one guest. Thanks to this large window, lots of natural light can be allowed into the area. But if you need to get your head down following a night watch, then you can close the blinds to turn the area into a cozy and dark space. This cabin is equipped with a wardrobe that offers both hanging space and drawers, ensuring ample storage for personal belongings. While the cabin shares a bathroom and shower facilities with a second guest cabin, it still maintains a cozy and inviting atmosphere for a pleasant stay on board the yacht. As we make our way from the guest cabin, we enter the luxurious master cabin, designed with comfort and style in mind. This private sanctuary offers a peaceful retreat after a day on the water. Beneath the master bed, you'll notice ample storage space for personal belongings, seamlessly integrated into the design. I love the large skylights that allows lots of natural light and ventilation into the area. We also see a TV mounted on the wall surrounded by beautifully crafted cabinetry. The climate controls within the master cabin enable a personalized temperature setting, ensuring maximum comfort throughout your stay on board. 
Moving into the ensuite bathroom, we first see the elegant shower head, followed by the toilet facilities. The thoughtful design of this space creates an almost spa-like atmosphere, enhancing your overall stay on board. The great use of lighting illuminates the ensuite bathroom really well and enhances its modern aesthetics. Panning down we see the stylish sink emphasised by indirect floor lighting, adding a touch of luxury to the space. As we step into the second guest cabin, we're greeted by two comfortable single berths, perfect for friends or family. The soft lighting creates a cosy and welcoming atmosphere, inviting guests to relax and unwind. The digital controls on the wall enable guests to easily adjust the air conditioning settings to their personal preference. Each berth is equipped with individual reading lights, offering a well-lit space for some late night reading or relaxing. Again, there's plenty of storage space in this cabin and I love the way that the cabinetry seamlessly blends into the cabin's design, maintaining a clean and tidy appearance. With the cupboards and drawers open, we can appreciate the ample storage space available for guests' belongings, making this cabin both practical and, of course, comfortable. In the guest bathroom, we get a glimpse of the mirror, which reflects the well-designed space. Moving downwards, we come to the sink with its sleek fixtures and ample storage space below for toiletries. Just beside the sink, we find the electric toilet. The shower in the guest cabin is a decent size and there is a porthole for extra ventilation when needed. There's also plenty of space for toiletries thanks to the shelving. Now that we have finished having a look around the accommodation areas, it is time to check out the engine bay and talk a little bit more about this boat's performance and technical specifications. And don't forget, in a minute, I'll be showing you around some of my favorite features aboard this boat, which itself is a new feature for my YouTube channel, so I'll be interested to hear what you think of it. As we enter the engine bay, we're greeted by the heart of this vessel, the Volvo Penta D4 diesel engine, which generates 175 horsepower and 128.8 kilowatts of power. This robust engine allows the yacht to reach a top speed of 10 knots and maintain a cruising speed of 8 knots. With 426 engine hours, this powerful machine has been well maintained and is ready for many more adventures. The engine bay also houses the electrical systems, including a 12 volt, 24 volt and 230 volt installation, ensuring sufficient power supply throughout the vessel. A Fisher Panda 5000i 4KW generator with wet exhaust and 52 running hours is also present, providing backup power when needed. The boat is equipped with proportional side power electric bow and stern thrusters, each generating 210 kgf of thrust. In terms of battery power, the boat is fitted with six 230 AH service batteries, a start battery, a 140 AH bow thruster battery, and a 140 AH stern thruster battery. Batteries are monitored and managed by a master volt battery monitor and are charged using two master volt mass combi ultra 24 3500 W charger inverters. The boat is also equipped with a Magnus master DMS stabilization system. The boat has enough capacity for 1000 liters of fuel in a single steel tank. The fuel consumption of a Volvo Penta D4 175 horsepower engine is approximately 0.9 litres an hour at 8 knots and around 1.1 litres an hour at 10 knots, but is dependent upon the boat's weight, sea conditions and other factors. But when motoring at 8 knots then you can expect a range of around 1,100 nautical miles and when motoring at 10 knots then the range is roughly 910 nautical miles. At the time of uploading this video, the boat is listed for sale with Dvork Yacht Brokers at €849,000 VAT paid. For more details, check the link at the bottom of the video description. A big thanks to Dvork Yacht Brokers and the owner for granting me access to this incredible motor yacht. If you have a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, contact me using the information provided 
in the video description below. And now join me for an informal tour as I show you around some of my favorite features. Obviously the huge swim platform is a big bonus as well, especially when you've got a few guests on board, you're not gonna be stepping over each other. I like the fact that it's got a starboard as well as a port boarding gate on the transom as well. Um, again, working the lines on this boat, if you're on here as a couple, uh, will be made a lot easier thanks to this kind of setup. You can see one of the gates just down there. It's got another one over on the starboard side as well. I think it's also a really good use of indirect lighting on this boat. I've always been a big fan of indirect lighting just because I think it really helps to set a nice ambience when you're on the water, at anchor, uh, or when you're alongside. And the use of the indirect lighting on here is really good. Uh, the other thing that I was really taken aback by was just how high these bulwarks are. Uh, I'm six foot four, uh, and I would feel more than happy being out on this in some gnarly weather because of the high bulwarks and also because of the, the handrail, which sits about a foot above that. Um, moving around this boat on the upper deck is extremely easy. Um, also as well, you've got two seats here on the bow, which I think is quite interesting because again, when you're at anchor, having a little seat on here as you take in your surroundings, I can imagine would be really relaxing. Also the huge windows allow for excellent visibility from the helm position. I'll take you back inside now just to show you that view. Again, as we walk down the starboard side deck, I don't have to twist to walk down there, which I hate twisting. If I have to walk along the side deck on a boat and I have to twist around, it can make it really uncomfortable. Obviously, I've already shown you the uh, saloon in here. Some really nice high quality equipment in here with an excellent finish as well. I can imagine keeping this clean would be a breeze. Um, and I really love this retractable TV. Uh, sitting here whilst enjoying that TV, I think would be a real delight. Uh, it's a decent sized telly as well. I'm not sure the exact inch, but yeah, it's definitely a decent size. But yeah, bringing you up to the helm position, the seats look incredibly comfortable. And when I sit on them, I can say with a lot of confidence, they are extremely comfortable. But imagine yourself at the helm and check out that view. Again, thanks to these massive windows, you really do get a good perspective of what is happening all around you. I mean, if I pan all the way aft, again, if you're operating this boat as a couple, it would be quite easy for you to get a good picture of what is happening all around the boat just because of the sheer size of the windows. Uh, I love this window here as well that obviously you can open for uh, additional ventilation. But yeah, it just feels like you're on a really high quality, really well-built boat. And there's plenty of headroom in here as well. Um, six foot four and I've got, what's that? Probably about seven inches above my head. Um, so yeah, moving around in here is just easy just because there is so much room. But yeah, I really love this helm position. Um, really comfortable seating. I love the wheel, really decent size wheel. And as you can see, everything you need is within easy reach. With the engine controls, obviously the steering and the bow and stern thruster as well. As I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of indirect lighting. I think the way that this boat has been lit is really good. As I say, it just helps to create that ambiance when you're motoring along or whether you're an anchor. And also the grab rails as well as you're moving around. If you do happen to find yourself in a bit of a swell going below deck, you're not going to be tripping and sliding everywhere because you've got a good solid hand rail to grab onto there. Also as well, there's plenty of fire safety equipment on this boat. Um, if you need some additional fire safety equipment for your boat, don't forget to check out my Amazon store. I'll leave a link in the video description. 
Uh, back in the uh, the forward master cabin again. Like I said before, the, the space and the headroom uh, is really hard to put across and describe, but suffice to say, there's a lot of it. And just imagine laying here and looking out that skylight. Decent sized skylight. If you want some privacy, you can close the shutter as well. Moving back aft again. Again, I love the way that this post is also made into a sturdy grab brow. But yeah, they're some of my favorite features. Um, I put a poll out on my YouTube channel a few days ago saying that I was gonna do this at the end of the videos just to give you a bit of a taste of what I really like about the boats that I'm on. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. A big thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to become a member, click on the link pinned in the comments. It's basically YouTube's version of Patreon. Don't forget to come and find me on Instagram because I post loads of updates on there. You'll find a link for my Instagram account in the video description. I've also got some videos in front of you now, which I'm sure you'll love. Please don't forget to give the video a like. And of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.